Escape Gaming's turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Riki. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Hello, everybody, and welcome back into Moondot TV, where we're here presenting the World Cyber Arena 2016 Season 2 Upper Bracket Finals. We are here with Escape Gaming versus Kai P in a best of five series. That's right. It is a best of five in the Upper Bracket Finals, and we're here on game number four. Are we going to go the distance, or is Kai P going to go ahead and just, uh, well, finish it off right here? They've been looking really good for the past two games, and let's see if they can carry it through to get that third game that they need for victory and the grand finals. With that said, my name is Mont, and we're here on Mood Duck TV. And as always, Purge is joining us today. Hello. And Purge, uh, Kai P's looked really good these past two games. They, they really have. They're impressing me a lot as a team right now. Um, again, they do have two stand-ins right now, so I'm not sure. Uh, from what I've heard, obviously, the secret announcement is that Pilot Eye stand on secret, but maybe he's just playing around with Kai P right now. I wonder who their support will be when Pilot Eye's not here, but um, is it is it fair to use Pilot Eye as a stand-in all the way to the Grand Finals, get qualified, and then swap him out? I'm not sure. That's, that's maybe a, a question for a different day, but he's here for the long haul, it seems. Is he gonna stay for the grand finals or leave? Cause... That's that's what I'm asking. Like it's because he's clearly playing this series today. I mean, it's only one day, so who knows? Maybe it'll change later. But I'll have to look at their rosters for the previous series they played. I don't think I. I, I you know, I, I was know wondering. I, earlier. I was wondering who the support was after Zai. Um, I know it was Masquerade oh, and Zai, and then Come with Me was the support that they added Games after Zai. Uh, by the way, I should point out I've been saying three. No, his real name is the Coon, but I think I like uh, I like pronouncing three. It's a little bit easier uh, to better, pronounce. It's also a better nickname as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rachel Slur. So yes, I would agree on. with that. I wasn't gonna bring that up, but I'm glad you did. But you know what else I'm gonna bring up? Purge is Betway.com, and oh, that makes uh, sense. yeah, so you guys can check out Betway.com, and of course, it's a great betting site, 100% legitimate, real money betting site. Of course, uh, as long as you're in a legal betting country and you're over 18 years of age you can actually bet at betway.com and if you sign up at betway.com using the banner below you'll get a free five euro bet so make sure you guys check that out but uh, we're into the draft purge escape picked up the ricky and the bat rider kaipi picked up the kunkka and the Murata. real quick i know there's been a lot of uh discussion about this is it kaipi or kp does anyone know really should be kaipi right yeah that's, that's what i thought yeah I, I just get confused when I look at their logo and it says KP. I'm like, oh, KP, but it's actually KP. I... Right. Yes. All right, let's talk about the game. Uh, Kunkka Marana opening here for KP. Uh, very standard, very solid for them. Um, been effective. Escape, um, kind of. Both teams consistently stealing heroes back one another. Uh, the Jugs pick is smart, like we talked about before. Kunkka Marana combos, he can just spin it. Very nice for him. Um, Ricky good at roaming. It was very, very effective last game. And Barrett as well. Changes things up a little bit. Um, but with Oracle being gone and SD also being gone on the first wave, it's a pretty good opening in here first. I feel like it always comes down to pick order, almost, in a lot of these games. Like, oh, you know, well, you guys pick Kunkka Marana, we'll just go for the Juggernaut this time around. You guys did it, it worked out pretty well, so we'll take it this time. And uh, first introduction of Batrider, I think, in the series so far. Um, I believe so. 
And the hero is, and I've talked about this with a couple of people um, all over the place, and he's just a hero that regardless of where he is currently in the metagame, unless he's nerfed to Oblivion, which he did have that one patch where he was very, very, very nerfed, um, he's almost always going to be in the meta, I feel like, because of his toolkit and what he can accomplish with it. Yeah, I mean, it's just so threatening to be able to lasso somebody and pull them towards your team out of position by that far. It's like a Aghanim's Vengeful Spirit Swap, essentially. Yeah. But it all comes down to whether or not you can catch him before that moment. So before he gets BKB, for example, in a lot of cases, Kunkka's going to be able to X mark him as he starts the lasso. And then if you cast that again immediately, it can break lasso. So it's actually a super good Batrider counter um, just right off the bat. I think as long as the distance traveled is far enough, mm -hmm. I think it will actually break lasso. It might also break it just right immediate. But that, that it's a good right. counter, basically. That sounds correct. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the Scapes draft so far, but the Tidehunter pick, what do you think about this in particular? Um, it's pretty decent against Spatrider um, because you can crack and shell, obviously, so that's pretty nice. Um, especially if somebody gets lassoed, usually what happens is you lasso somebody, you pull it towards your team, and then Tide can follow up and blink and ravage and just make the assumption that the other team is being around where the lasso target is. So usually you can catch a really good ravage that can pretty much mess up that initiation. So in that sense, it's it's quite a good pick. Um, he does have to worry about Smoke Cloud. Omni Slash is quite good against Tide usually also. So issues that Tide will have to be worried about, but um, as a whole, I, th I think the Tide pick is good. It's also going to severely reduce the damage of escape in the mid-game, just due to Anchor Smash. It's a good pick. And the Ogre Magic comes out for escape gaming, thus buffing up, well, Ricky, Juggernaut, and theoretically, even the Batrider, too. Is he, You know, he, he right-clicks a fair bit if he has enough CK Napalm stack, so Bloodlust is going to help. Not to mention movement speed, which is even more important for Batrider in the early stages of the game. And really, for all of these heroes, I think in the Ogre, he, he's just a strong hero, regardless of who you pair him with. I can't think of any really terrible pairings with an Ogre Magi, but there, I'm sure there's some. It, okay, fair enough, but that does give him move speed at the very least. So yeah, it's... but he can't attack, and his move speed's already good. That's probably yeah, the worst yeah. I can think of. Top of my head. Um, yeah, you're right. Like Ogre really does facilitate um the rest of your team to be very strong. We didn't really get to see that that much in the previous game, fortunately. But um, Ogre is really good. Yeah. It came um, down his early. His early roaming's game. amazing too. It's really the part that you kind of need to exploit on Ogre. Um. And they can this game. Ricky plus Ogre is a very, very dangerous combo because basically Ricky can be anywhere that they don't expect. And then if you can get the Ogre there as well, then all of a sudden you kind of have a, a less less predictable roam. You're going to have to be very careful with how you set up this mid lane again. Marana, luckily she has leap, but if you get smoke screened, it's not going to matter. They should have enough damage between an Ogre, a Ricky, and we'll call it... Honestly, it could be Jug or Bat mid, or they could pick up something else from it too, which is the crazy thing. Um, but we don't know where KP is going either. KP is going, excuse me, either. They have the Marana, which has been run mid a lot. And uh, I think Sing Sing played it safe lane first game, though, I or one of the games. Yeah, yeah. game one, he played it safe lane. They lost that game. Game two played it mid, I believe, um, or somebody did. I think it was him. I think, you know, the other team might have been Escape that played it mid. I think maybe Limp or something. Lin played it mm, mid Rana versus I... Juggernaut, which sings Juggernaut. That was game two. Well, Sing Sing did have a mid Juggernaut against that uh, Escape Limp. Um, I want to say Limp uh, Legion. I think also against someone else, too. I think it was two. And now Kaipi go for the Terrorblade, which was very popular back in Manila and even picked a little bit in TI, but sort of fallen out of favor. It's a good pick here, though. I like how they did Venge fourth pick, so it was a little unexpected, and then they grabbed TB at the end. Um, their opponents were expecting Slark, but TB kind of covers a lot of these the issues that... Like, it's, it's kind of out of nowhere. Um, the main issues are Smoke Cloud from Ricky, a couple chain disables, but he can always do Sunder, so as long as there's not, like, Juggernaut Omni slashing him, there's going to be a target that he can use, most likely. And with Swap, he can get outside of the Smoke Cloud, I believe. So the fact that they just like finish their draft like that is is kind of unpredictable and pretty scary for escape you yeah. should be able to dps through all these guys really rapidly i think it does come down to those swaps and uh really well the team fight initiation from the rest of kai p making it so the terror blade isn't getting focused and if, if escape getting if gets stunned enough then then terror blade can stay alive he can get a sunder off or he can just start yeah, laying into him with uh, his damage from his images as well as metamorphosis so terror blade the well Terribly, the hunter now going to be picked up, and it's Alk for escape gaming. Woo All right. All right. Another stun. Um, I, I, their team fight just looks pretty, pretty inferior to what Kaipi has, though. 
I'm not sure. I, I feel like Escape's going to have some trouble making space for Alk. I guess they have a pretty good format in ro rotating, but it's very relevant how fast Bat gets Blink. If, if Izu's Blink is delayed, then the four heroes aren't going to be able to create space very well, I don't think. And Kaipi should be able to just group up and push or take fights while TB splits or groups of the team as well. So I think I like Kaipi's draft far better here. Um, Alchemist is a pretty solid pick, but I think they have damage to, to deal with him um, at all stages of the game. I feel like there's a little bit of everything. Lots of team fight, good magical damage. You have uh, Cleave with Tidebringer. If you want to build into that, you have Wave of Tear for armor reduction. I had Gush as well. So the the thing is that this would be a very good Roche taking team if they were on Dire. They're on Radiant, however. Not to say it's the worst thing in the world, but that's just how I feel about this this roster. Um, just... I mean, it should be fine. They just got to win a fight first, and then they can go take it. But until then, they can't because they have to worry about Batrider. Uh, that's four melee heroes on escape, by the way. If anything, there's too many people to bloodlust, actually. <laughs> He's going to have his job cut out for him. How much? Uh, it's 50 mana per bloodlust. Per bloodlust. Yep. And he only starts with a 254. Now, he does build into what usually? Um, arcanes, I believe, for the most part. You can change it up. Um, might be a really good glimmer game. I think that's maybe what Sin should have done last game. He, he ended up going to arcanes into an eventual glimmer, but the glimmer was quite delayed despite his early farm, but he got Arcanes instead, which is good, but I think I think a Fast Glimmer, or maybe with a Soul Ring, or Raindrop Wand would have been a, maybe like a Wand, Wander, and perhaps Arrow's going to be scouting for this. Yeah, this is a Rapid. good position. He's got a he sees corn. Bone 7. Wow. Torn, oh, man. He, bone if Arrow seven. did... Oh, Bone 7 Yeah, Bone 7, up. yeah, he did. He walked a little too far forward. That Torrent would have hit otherwise. That's actually... Like, I saw those Bambo Rage Pings do. You see those pings? That I was Bambo. Him. He's like, you moved! Because the torrent was going to land, but he showed. He started walking, and it would have been a torrent into Venge approaching with Venge stun, and possibly an arrow, most likely. They would have had that kill. That would have been FB. They even have the arrow skill up right now, so they're ready to go. Yeah, uh, that was a pretty big mistake. Man, if somebody would have first blood boots advantage. That can change in an early game so much. Mind you, they did drop that war down over the ancient stack on the radiant side, so... There is some vision from escape. Not only that, but there's this ward placed in such a way that it will block the pole camp as well. Not only that, but get some okay vision. I'd like to be a, a little bit maybe over towards this area, maybe down behind the tower over here would be nice. I don't know if you want it that early, but now mid lane metamorphosis three man mid and Lift is caught out, but he does have blade fury. I don't think this is a kill. They commit three and meta to try to get this. The torrent misses also with the absorb and limp just now salving up. Bambo trying to interrupt the salve there, that could have been absolutely game-changing. Salve gets interrupted as soon as the spin ends, and Limp just loses his lane. He'd have to go back to heal, pretty much. What kind of a big deal that they didn't get that kill. So, I mean, in the end, it is a Terra Blade mid, and what do you think about that now? I mean, it's very good against the jump right now, range, I feel like, but... As soon as his metamorphosis goes away, that's when things get a bit iffy. Yes, exactly. And that still last hits really well, but as soon as Limp starts spinning aggressively, it gets tough. Picks up a fast wind lace just to have movement speed advantage. That way he can maybe get away out of uh, Blade Fury range. That already moves back down bottom. Four last hits. Pretty good serve for him. But the Tide as well as the Terror Blade getting off to the faster start. Again, though, still very early on here. Sing Sing. Off lane Marana, which is not something you expect. He is farming the jungle by just taking a couple of arrows and sending them into the Hellbear Smasher. So, okay. It's, it's a very speed gaming MLG right now. Yes. Marana, Marana and or clock, clock offlane. Uh, if only clock was actually good in this meta. Once in a while he is, but most of the time no. Oh well. We'll keep our eyes peeled so, bottom. Bad versus Tide is, is not very special. Like nobody's... Tide shouldn't die here because he should be able to crack and shell off the um, napalm stacks, which means shouldn't. We'll see. Yes. Not to mention the sick that he picked up, as well as one yeah. lace. It's gonna be tough. Depths are being here is gonna do almost nothing. Maybe it'll make a level three here. He could prep some stacks, go kill but on top of that. Could change it. And Ricky gets boots as well. And I thought about trying for it, but the three three just backed up a bit much. And he's gonna have his sicky napalm stacks. Ooh, I thought they were gonna expire, but he gets him with another one there. It was close. Playing it really safe, basically. He could be there. 
Um, there's a chance that Batrider plus Tide would be a death. If you playing it real safe. Wind lays boots to speed for him too, so anything that Batrider normally gets out of lowering mobility, um, he's going to offset that a bit with the Wind lace. And now 3-3 three, three knows that there is the Absur nearby, but I don't think they can dive this. He's plenty tanky, 6 tangos to regen with, and a salve. Not to mention 10 stick charges. So it looks it's... like it's just a very a very boring-ish game. Um, the sports eventually do rotate top cover Marana, and this is going to limit Arrow's farm. No more last hits for him, no more gold advantage. They also block the small camp to prevent him from doing that, at least. And in the meantime, Sinrin just stacking camps for Alchemist, so... Uh oh, there's potential for a gank mid, but Bone Seven's back on his side of the river fast enough. He knows. I think the Sentry Reward might have scouted him out with the range that uh, Yapster has. I'd almost Bone die Seven solo, to, but he's got a self, so he goes back up to full HP. Whew. Dangerous. Meanwhile, Torrent, they're going to find Cinder. It'll try to TP away. And was that the X marks? Yes, it was. Bloodlust, he'll be pretty speedy again. Eight armor, but still with the wave of tear there. They need two more. And they'll actually only get it with the one. Bye bye, die. Getting the job done. I thought Cinder had two uh, right clicks before he died, but I was wrong in that instance. Great oh, kill. Oh, yep, so can steal this. Can he get the last hit? Well, he's going to show himself first. Wait for it. Wait for it. Bambo is Wait for it. so dead here. He sh yep, there it is. Like Bambo knew. Yapsor. Did you see him move there? He like knew. He knew he was there. He, uh, Yapsor, I thought actually auto attacked, and I thought he auto attacked the hero, but I guess not. I guess it was just a no, no. He just it looked different on my screen. He was like, "This is taking so long. Like Ricky could be here." Missile, arrow, they have got the torrent follow up on arrow as well. The silence won't help him, not yet anyway. The good fairy fire is sing sing is low. They need one more right click. No, he's still alive, but now we'll finally fall. Pile I die is the trade, however, and now it's going to be a jump back in. There's the dust up. No arrow, and they're out of meta as well for sing sing. X marks is going to go. They've got the torrent on top of this, but it's not enough damage. TP away from sing sing. Syndrome's going to try to wrap around and stop him from getting out, but does, little does he know that he's already TP'd out at this point. And uh, Bambo will just go in tr deeper into the tree line. He's being pinged, but not exactly. They don't know where he is. They know that he's still here in the vicinity. You can see the pings. Yapster's about to see, walk this, in, this and is Bambo has been found. He, they knew that he didn't have a TP. Torrent will hit on to two. I don't think he could get out regardless, though. He's getting body blocks at this point. Try to juke and jive at every juncture, but that's going to be Bambo dead. Yep, so knows Bambo just too well. They, they were teammates for a long time. This is literally what's happening in this game. Like, oh, Bambo's slow, man. I'm going to go run over. He's going to suicide in neutral somewhere. And oh, I know exactly where he hides in the trees here. This is the. Ravage bottom, Kezu just gets blown up. Wasn't expecting the level six from 3 3, who gets a solo kill on the Bat Rider. How, does he, how do you do that without Gush? I'm very surprised. Like, He was low. The Bat Rider was very low. He must have just got him with a bunch of anchors or something. I, I think so. Really yeah. surprising. Maybe he went for a kill attempt of his own and failed and took too much damage. And then. That has no regen other than magic stick of his own. It looks like he had I don't a 10 know stick. What, well, what the, the Bat Rider was doing there. Omni Slash comes out, I think, and now they're going to find a kill. It's going to be the Venge down. X Marks will go into Yapso, the Torrent to follow. They do have no Metamorphosis, but he has no mana, so. The Blink Strike away will be successful. In fact, they're, they're just fine, man. Completely fine. So it's going pretty good for escape this game, with the exception of the the bat rider dying there. That's the, the alchemist doing. Yep, so having a really good game, three zero and one. Elk is that's another problem though. No bounty runes because he's in the top lane. Twenty last hits. Uh, too yeah. shy, actually too shy of the um, bone seventh air blade. So it could be a lot worse. Sure that the tide is having a great time, but that. That's not going to account for a lot if your your three main cores, uh, one of them is a tide, and, and the other two are sort of struggling. Yeah, they're they're having some major trouble with the elk. It's not paying off at all right now. Embo and Sing Sing. Yeah, sort nearby. No sentries placed down. Not for the raiding team. Not that I can see. Acid spray on the deck, and Yapsor will continue to get vision on Bambo. No dust yeah, either. No detection. That makes it kind of hard. It certainly does. Do an engagement here. I mean, Arrow doesn't have a disable though, so mostly they're just trying to cover him. But he's so far behind right now. Not worth isn't even matching the uh, Terra Blades. So. <sighs> and real scary for them. I even with the you know, hold that thought. There's the Blade Fury coming out. Bone Seven does have Sunder, but he doesn't need it right now. Although. 
X marks not in position. Bambo was close. The Absor, ooh, Dust is going to go. He's going to find this X. Yes, he will. Thorn's going to come next as well. And it does hit, although he was almost out. Match mission will fly on the X. There's the Wave of Terror. Good uh, blink strike out coming from the Absor actually will keep him alive. They needed a meta or they needed more burst damage there as Sing Sing does bring down the Ogre top lane. Big kill. They needed that drastically because I felt like Sing was a little bit behind. Yeah, the supports are really behind too, and you're seeing it in these engagements. There's just not enough damage coming out of Kai P. Got almost TPing, but cancels it. Not sure if that was on purpose, but he'll be back to base. They could really use Ghost Ship. You're right about that. Not only Ghost Ship, but more damage getting pumped out of this Pilot Eye Vengeful Spirit. Elk's catching up now. Been able to fin uh, been able to pass net worth over Terrorblade. Be happy at the moment. Yeah, Bone Seven. He needed a better start in order to be in a very good position now, but the start okay, had... but that's not amazing. There's only so much you can do against a jug, you know, like got Dwelling Blade, he's got 39 CS. That's like how many CS I get. Uh, but it's because it's against a jug and there's been support roaming and it's it's tough. They Terrible have... mid is pretty scary. Look at this smoke. They need to get this kill. And the torrent won't find it. Swap back, not there, not level six. Blade Fury will go. And how far are you willing to dive? Is the question. Not that far, but this should be a tower taken unless they're ready to they TP in. They're ready to defend the snow blink lasso, but they can walk up if they can. Cinder and Bloodlusting and Bat Rider making it a bit speedier. Mm, they still have the Ravage ready to go for 3-3. Three, three. Let's see how much they do want to commit to this tower. Wave of Terror will go still into level 6. That Vengeful Spirit, level 4. And here comes the App Store. Blink Strike in. He drops the smoke screen. There's going to be the Torrent. Not on target. Blade Fury going. Push him back. Wait for the next Creep Wave. And with that, Metamorphosis is down for... It's going to be down pretty soon. And they'll try to put the rest of the pressure in. And try to get this tower. They just can't do it. Flame break too good. They have the Moonlight Shadow now down, but even with that, I don't see them pushing in and finding the, yeah. uh, the tower. The longer that escape delays this forward, the better it is for Alchemist and, and their team as a whole. Like they're wasting Metamorphosis, a lot of rotations. Oh, this is bad. Okay. If Sunder ready to go, he can turn and try to use it, although range is pretty bad. Ravage ready to go. There's the Blade Fury. 3 3 wants oh, to hold yeah, it, try to get the Ravage on it too. It's going to go perfectly timed down to Limp Limp. Omni Slash, he will stay alive, but only for a moment longer. 3-3, now still alive, gets the stick off. The Anchor Smash going to work. That Rider getting chewed down as well. They want more. Fireflies there, and here comes the Blink Strike back, and everyone is so low. I think Kai P need to maybe think about getting out, and they will do so. And if it's lucky that the Alchemist didn't show up. If he did, he could throw down an Acid Spray and just run at him with Chemical Rage. Might be enough to get a kill or two. But it's more important to get farm. Um, they did almost get some kills. Losing limp was a big deal, but tower's still alive. That's the really important thing in that fight as a whole. Yeah, they just they didn't have meta. The ravage hit one important target, but he got the omni slash off. There's still no ghost ship for Bambo, so they're missing on the rum and extra damage. It's just that Kai P are a little far off from that point there that they want to be at when it comes to taking fights early on in this game. And again, the further they are behind. The more the Alchemist continues to farm, and they might smoke for him again and go for him, but it's it's tougher now that he's the armlet and chemical rage. A lot of heroes really under leveled as well. Sindarin was level two ogre at the start of that fight, but now just trying to get six for him. Um, yeah, sort of similar situation, six on him. Everyone under leveled this game do all the lane swaps. But they're trying to catch up now. That should lead to some good fights. The scan mid, they know that there's heroes there. Probably Batrider looking for a lasso. Doesn't have the blink yet though. Only arcane boots are uh, going probably eight lens. And yeah. seven does finish the tower. And blink is coming close though for Kazu. Two thousand and uh, one hundred gold now. This bottom lane, the Absor is continuing to shadow Bambo, who has level six. This is a sketchy kind of situation, Ricky. The warrior himself. Watching Bambo just so, take creeps down bottom. On bat that would be a pretty straightforward kill i think i think so and he's close i, I mentioned he is close he's got it now he's flying out as we speak i wonder if he bought it he did buy a smoke with it and also cinder bought a smoke as well so they have a very clear intention of hey guess what you know what time it is it's smoke blink time but at the same time tide does have a mech so if they can respond quickly enough they can mech and they can save whoever's getting lassoed 
Most likely. Um, they're going to look in the Radiant Jungle, though. Bambo's still sitting down here. It's good for support to be the one that's in the area. That way, if somebody does eventually get ganked, it's just a, uh, just a support. Ooh, they really want arrow. Yeah, they do. They've only got one X marks to spot, though. It's so difficult. He doesn't even have phase on Konka either, so closing the gap can be difficult. You could use that phase badly. And and smart play from Mera. He suspects that there's danger. He rotates mid where the farm is. And he's not gonna... I mean, yeah, he might lose his tier 1 tower top lane. I don't even suspect that because Bone 7 has to back away, although his Dragon Lance is done. It'll take more time now to get the tier 1 tower, especially with the glyph going off. Escape is going to be able to take a pre tower bottom as their heroes are in position. He's going to get traded though. Everyone else in Kaipi is top lane. They're definitely anticipating these movements. They don't want to try to take a fight when their opponent is going to have more guaranteed vision due to Ricky. Kind of iffy though. Trading right now feels dangerous to me just because of Alchemist. He will eventually get his Radiance. He's actually not that far behind now. He's no, only about he's two not. minutes out. Uh, what was a maybe big of a bit of an issue of a start has turned into a pretty good game for this alchemist. Ravage! Oh, oh doesn't get him no! In time. No Ravage on Era. He's walking out happy as he can be. And the smoke screen to cover the retreat even more. Weeha without that Ravage hitting. That's that's not great. That's Radiant's awful, in fact. Era continues yeah. just to. He doesn't care. I, so think that, I, I don't think he realized where how close uh, Sing Sing was. If they would have ravaged there, they could have gotten an arrow follow up. Which was oh, is he still going to die? They have no swap, but Arrow. Great son. Right, so we'll come through into Bambo, but Arrow, the Star Storm's going. He pops the armlet. Next going to go. Cinder will give his life away. And Arrow will head into the tree line to buy a TP scroll. And I don't see him dying. The ghost ship coming through. Bambo taking a lot of damage from that Firefly, but Yapster will probably. Good nope, die. just keeps you on the Bat Rider getting the kill. <laughs> Interesting engagement. So one for one, did he did he have a firefly in there or something? I don't know how he got yes. trapped in the first place. I think so. Get a tower out of it at least. It's not terrible for Kaipi. Uh, both teams oh. kind of trading evenly here. They see after they have detection. Gus comes out. Do they have any dust on them? Swapped yeah. already, so. Ambo does, but he's dead. That's that's rather unfortunate. He lives. He's gonna go to the same build. Um, picking up Diffusal Blade. Still would like to see him max out his cloak and dagger. He's had a good early game again. I think he needs to go that build. They really limited him in the last game in a lot of ways. Yeah, I would not mind the max cloak and dagger. Sing Sing's being followed and tailed by Yapsor, and that's what a good Riki does. He tails and puts ward down, puts wards down all over the map, and that's exactly what's happening now. And arrows almost at the radiance, very close. Two or three camps will have it here. A uh, limp going for a Yasha. So I guess Manta is the call here. I guess and why maybe. I'm alright with it. They're gonna take the Rex, although not stacked up. Uh Yapser will walk into a sentry room or sentry ward, excuse me. They have the X marks though, and he's gonna pop the smoke screen and blink strike away. Yapsor is a master of escape, but and again, it's kind of easy for Ricky. Still, Ghost Ship's going to come through as the torrent hits. He absolutely will avoid it by going the opposite direction. But because of that, he runs into the open arms of Kai P's heroes. Finally, it's, they take down that pesky Ricky. And it's, it's not even necessarily that um, Yapsor is good at escaping. It's that his teammates consistently back him up. They'll stand in areas that he can blink strike to get out. That one didn't quite work out, but consistently from the start of the game to the end. So far, they've been helping him blink out. Limp in trouble. He's going to have to spin TP, I think. But they have, should have swap. They do. He has to just get away from Ben, it's the only way he escapes this. The body blocks, they want to make sure they can body block. The arrow will hit, they have magic missile, he's just not in range. Yet. Swap it. Now he can. Now he can. Is he in range though? I don't think he is. He's not. He's not going to be able to get in range, I don't think, unless they can find another arrow. But here comes the Yapsor. Omni Slash. Oh, Sing. Oh, Sing, messed up. Sting, that was a little too aggressive. And Pylai Dai will die to Flame Break, I should imagine. Absolutely will. That was... Over aggressive. That's definitely yeah, no. what I would use. This thing really wanted to kill there. He he went for it, but Era? Alright. Almost an okay trade there. Almost. Ugh. Well we got the Marana, but then Alk died. I'm sure they gave two amounts of gold. It's just six hundred eighty two yes. gold to Alk. That was a twelve hundred HP or like three hundred gold swing. 
probably shouldn't have happened. You can't die like that. It's so it's so important for alchemists. When you have that much net worth, if you if you die in little ganks like that, it trades so much back to the enemy team due to comeback mechanics. And it was the the, the terrible that was involved as well. He didn't get the kill, I don't think, but he was involved. Yeah. Uh, and oops. now TB is two zero and two. That's kind of place that you should be really scared. It's a terrible. If he's positive KDA, and you know that he's gonna get past this dangerous area where his HP is pretty low, once he picks up things like Mantis style Scotty, then his HP is huge. It's very difficult to kill him. So the more kills he gets early on, the the less of a window you have to win the game. He's getting there with the Dragon Lance helping out as well, but they just they haven't really been connecting on the fights that they needed to connect on. It's gonna be a lot easier with the Blink Dagger now on the Tide Hunter. No Ravage though. He just used it. Top Rune spot. Arrow still available. Cinder is going to walk away uh, happy that he's picked up a bounty rune. On the other side, Yapsor, Vision not there from the Venge. They almost they did some damage to him, but their their new potential is not very high. Um, the skill build that Pilot I went is just simply not very good at bursting arrows down. It's really good when he's standing next to Terrorblade. It really amplifies his damage up, which is why he's doing it. But sometimes I, I feel like maybe Venge should be grabbing two points of magic missile alone just for stun duration and damage increase. We saw that earlier, I think, either today or yesterday. Just, they just stuff. purchased and it's wasted. So it's just making these guys run in circles. He's creating an immense amount of space. And then Ricky is doing some serious work. Game not over yet. And the net worth lead is 4,000 for escape. That's pretty significant. And then a lot of that comes from the Alchemist, obviously. Um, and the Ricky, too. The Ricky as support is, is now... 4,000 might not seem like a lot, but if he picks up a, a Diffusal Blade, then Ash Missile, Limp's gonna get caught. They have the Gush, they have Ready, Swap Back, and he's gonna have to use his Blade Fury at some point. Maybe not. Blade Kinda Fury, TP would have been available. Yeah, I mean, the swap... No, he didn't have TP, actually. Um, maybe they should have just swapped. They should have just swapped. I don't know if they checked to see that he didn't have TP. I think that would have made it worth it. He would have had to spin, maybe, afterwards, and then just chase him down after or something either way now it actually looks like they're starting to get aggressive this uh kp squad mac blink ravage all up yeah it's their time to go i can understand if escape doesn't want to fight into this is there fourth step yet on the bat rider absolutely but he was wave of terror so he does get his blink on cooldown although the glyph will allow him to reset though firefly is getting low the tier two tower will end up falling and it's, uh, no, well, it's starting to go back up. I know the net worth graph isn't updating yet, but it should head up in favor, especially if they do Roche after this. They want to, or try to. Gold for me. Radiance middle tower is I think Swarm is top. getting pretty behind, too. He's he's behind Juggernaut now. He's actually getting outfarmed by his Tide as well. Doesn't have eggs yet, and it's 20 minutes, Radiance and it's very late, actually. Did go a lot of um, intermediary Radiance items, like Phase Boost top Wand, top. but... He's having some issues here. He should have more farm than this, I think. He'll get there. When he gets the Aghanim step here, it'll help out a lot. Yeah, it will definitely. Yeah, man. It feels like they almost need a jammer sentry wards to deal with the Absor at this point. I mean, the way that he plays is kind of interesting. He's mostly doing a vision base. It's not about setting up kills, it's just letting your opponents up, like, except yeah. for this case. And in this case, it is about setting up kills as Pilate Dive falls to his knees after a couple of guttings from the Omni Slash of the Juggernaut, who's building Battle Fury? He went from Yasha back to the yeah. The Yasha helps him move around the map farming more rapidly and getting into range for Omni Slashes, and then by building Battle Fury, it's going to guarantee that he outfarms Terrorblade more rapidly in the mid game. Good choice, honestly. I think they don't want to make a mistake. They want to be able to secure the late game, and one way to do that is going to be a Battle Fury. Exactly. Your farm rate goes up so much when you have Battle Fury come their builds, so. I'm uh, I'm okay with it. And they continue to just have a, a lead because Alchemist isn't dying. And the Jug continues to also get plenty of good farm. And it's also the Ricky again that's just really becoming a problem. So Kai P have to find an Alchemist killer too. They can transition that into an objective. Uh, the one way they could do that, or, or just any kill for that matter, one way they could do that is going to be a smoke of deceit. And while Yapsor is nearby, if he breaks the smoke, he can get out very easily. It's the ghost ship, however, that they'll find on Delimpy, but he does spin away. Swap back should be available, and in fact, it is for Pile I Die. He'll do it just in case, just to make sure, and Marana will pick up the kill. And double damage is picked up by Yapsor. They dust up and smoke, or dust up and drop a sentry, and they are just narrowly 
narrowly missing on Yapsor, who now has that DD up and ready to go, but they'll try to go for Roche anyways. We need somebody to break Lincoln so we can gush with it. Maybe a mistake. Ben just so low on mana, they can't justify it. They should be able to get it, though. I don't think Escape can, can contest this without Jug. It doesn't it's look like they're trying. Yeah. All right. In the meantime, though, Alchemist finishes Manta. He's got BOT's Manta. Uh, has he always had the Spring of Bacillus? Is he going? There's no way he's going Vlad's here. Mm, I don't think so. I've I've seen that Ring of Bacillus and Alchemist more often than not. I can't remember where it comes from. It might be for push reasons, just because if your illusions have a Ring of Bacillus, it'll still give two armor to all the creeps. So maybe it has something to do with that, or just the, the extra armor increase in the early game is justified. Though you can do similar things with like Iron Talon in some ways, but who knows? <sighs> this is getting tense right now, Purge. I yeah. feel like it's looking like game five might be right around the corner. It might be. He is having some issues. They did just finish Roche, obviously, but I'm on escape keeps going up. Yapsor is pretty uncontested scouting them consistently, so their ganks have been iffy. And they're forced to five man as well. Right, Finally, they, this time, they find him. Oh, did they get him? That's the real question. Magic Missile comes out. Yes. Wow, they are lucky. I don't want to say they're lucky they get that third Star Storm, but it feels lucky almost. Yeah, and he had the Agony uh, Scepter, so... Was it, even, was it even a third one? Yeah, it was. It was three. I, I'm 90 I think it might have been based sure on, like, that. Vision or something. It's very confusing now to see the Star Storm thing when it re retargets or whatever. It's very strange. What are they gonna do? Are they gonna go high ground here? I mean, they they should. There's a dead hero. They they're probably not gonna win late game against Elk. Take the no, tower. I don't think so. Where is the Elk? He's bottom two. lane. Set of racks is at stake. No glyph available. TP's coming in. Yaps was finally back alive. Another TP this time that'll come through from the Juggernaut. Dying Push them back. Are fortified. Tower's so low. Bottom tower They'll back for a attack. second. Fake back, potentially. Let the tier 2 tower fall bottom to Illusions. As the Alk has TP homed. TP at home. The X marks the TPing Sing Sing. He'll be back momentarily. Radiant He's got a Blink Dagger. He didn't pick it up. Oh, mm -hmm. they messed they up. Do it again. Oh, they could do it again. I don't know. They maybe shouldn't have committed there. And you're, it doesn't matter. They keep freeze gone at the very least. Smoke screen, so the mischance is there, and here comes the Link Lasso, but the X marks onto the Murata stops it from happening. Well played, Lip now swap back, Ghostship flying in, and look at this damage! Yapsor trouble, two down, immediate they buyback coming rabbit. in. Bone 7 needs to use that Sunder on somebody, Magic Missile will come through. Bone 7 has the Aegis, maybe he doesn't need to again. Metamorphosis doesn't persist through death though, so he needs to be very careful. Guarding Greaves will go again, Sunder onto Lip! Will he fall a second time? No, he will not, but the Rex and Lip though. It's a very tense situation. Escape from mistakes away from throwing this game away. They will lose the melee Rax. Yes. It's time to get out for Pylai Dai and the rest of the crew. Here we go, though. Starstorm dropping Omni Slash. They need a Sunder. They need a Sunder. And the CH is gone. Dead. Sunder was already used. Glyph now. Glyph clearing away. It's the unstable concoction. Era now with the chemical rage. Gets X marks back. Can they bring him down? It's the melee form. Bone 7 doesn't do nearly enough to torrent just off the mark, and it looks like Era will stay alive with the Chemical Rage, healing him back up. But Dambo getting chased down. Kezu wants to kill with two sticky napalms and a firefly. You bet your ass he'll fall. That was such a close fight there. Escape almost held it, but they did lose melee barracks already. They got some return kills at least. The supports went down, but they didn't get the important cores. Only getting an Aegis there. Tough. That's... You know, just this small window here that they weren't quite ready for that Rax attempt. They got punished pretty hard. The big thing was uh, Limp Dying. He had to buy back as well, so his farm rate's now really behind, and maybe he's regretting that Battle Fury bit. Yeah, this is a problem now because it was a 7,500 net worth lead, and it's down to 2,500 for escape. So every little inch matters in this game, as you just saw. Had they killed the Alchemist and forced him to buy back, would have been even better. Or a die back yeah. on Limp, one of the two. That's a lot of if hands and butts, however, for Kaipi. Really, it makes the, the Vengeance just so good because of this. It was, it's kind of beautiful the way that Kaipi did their draft, if you think about it. They opened with Konka to bait out the Jug pick, and then they said, well, then we'll pick Jug counters in the last two. I'm pretty sure they planned this going into it, considering how well it matches up against it. Like, Jug is just so punished. He has to, he can't just spin TP, so the later ganks are very easy. 
And then just the whole swap thing. Swapping into Terrorblade and Melee Range, he kills anybody. He does more damage than any other hero when his illusions are up. Maybe Chaos Knight. Roosh is now down for some real long time. They have a Scotty for Terrorblade, which is going to make him tankier, but again, it's not a second life. Meta is back up. Ravage is getting there. 36 seconds, and they'll have everything ready to go. Blink has been picked up for Lemp, so his mobility is there. It's not a damage item. It's not a survivability item. You can argue that it is a survivability item with mobility that it gives you. But here they go. Smoke from the side. Escape will look to find a fight. They're going to look for Kizu to get it lasso. And they'll find it on Pylai Die. But meanwhile, the gun's on Kizu. Ravage is back up soon. Tricks of the trade will go. Pylai Die getting low. And so is Bambo. But still, can they find any heroes to bring down? It looks like Bone 7. He's going to have to use. That's under, and now Era is gonna have to get away. The gush will go, but it's not enough. Sing Sing has taken down another on the backside, and Limp is coming back in, ready to go. The healing ward is there. He'll drop the reflection. Ravage will go. Can they bring Era down? They drop down Limp. He's dead for 86. The gush is there. Era doesn't have the chemical rage. They want to jump in. The anchor smash. The armlet toggle. They can't chase him down. I'll have to turn their attention towards us. the tier two tower. These guys ulti in three. They can chase us, especially if they keep napalm stacks on everybody here. This is looking Dude, that's pretty exactly good for what escape. They're doing. Bone 7 might be in trouble. He does a lot of damage. Oh, still on the wrong one. Kezu and Era is in trouble. About to go down. He pops the Manta and that might save his life. The Gush isn't there. The body blocks are there as well from 3-3 unintentionally. So more TP's coming in. It's going to be this time from Yapsor. Bone 7 on Sable Concoction. No more Sunders still for 29 seconds. They have the Unstable Concoction going and doing damage as well as the Silence on the ground. One oh. goes down, and that is the biggest target. It's going to be the terrible. The other TPing away is 3 3. It's time for the Bone 7 Mask of Madness. You think so? Oh, wow. Just bought it when it already died. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. This is the Bone. I mean, it's kind of a cool idea. He's he's a little bit slow when he goes into Metamorphosis mode, and there's always these very small windows where you need to kill somebody. And. Mask of Madness is a great way to do it. It really does amplify your damage, and in some ways it's okay because then even if you get low, you can just Sunder Swap out of it. So, kind of a good idea. Also, it does give really good lifesteal right now. One of the big differences between it and something like Helm of the Dominator or Vlad's is that Mask of Madness is 20% lifesteal. It's really close to what Satanic gives you. So, I mean, he's bringing it back, man. If anyone else is going to bring back Mask of Madness, I'm glad it's Bone 7. Uh... Scotty doesn't work with Mask of Madness. It only works with uh, it Satanic, does. correct? Life Stealer, or Life Steal and Scotty does work together. Okay. I think for sure on Rangers, I can't remember if they fixed it for melees yet. Okay. I don't think it works on on melees, but for mm -hmm. ranged, definitely. All right, well. Find out in five seconds when he hits his neutral. Yeah, I certainly will. Unless he hits it with an illusion, then we will never know. We will never know. He's very close to 16, by the way, which is going to be an increase in it or decrease in his thunder cooldown. 40 seconds is pretty good. It's not enough for two per fight, but that last fight was pretty long. You can cut it out long enough, maybe. And the mana requirement becomes zero at that point as well. I wonder if he's ever going to use the Mask Madness. It looks like he is getting both Lifesteal and Scotty, by the way. So they should stack. Yeah, I mean, he's getting some sort of lifesteal, I think. So Morano went for Blink Dagger first after Ags. Now he's going for a Lincoln Sphere. Very likely because of uh, Lasso. He can use it on himself or allies. I think it's a good choice. Um, maybe it would have been a better idea to go E-Blade, but it does make Terrorblade not be able to attack. So I, I think his his item build is pretty justified here. Okay. Era's got his uh, Octarine Core finished, so he's basically capped out. He could start buying Ags for people. And considering that he did get Solar Crest, I think it might be worth it. His damage is all right right here, but I, I, he, you know, he's so many good Ags heroes on his team. They could put an Ags on uh, Bat Rider, on Ogre, on Jug, and it would be really useful. I, I like Jug. I, I think I would because, like him doing it. I think the Jug uh, Agatim's pickup in this game is just stats and the extra couple of jumps that it gives you to maybe survive or whatever. But look at this. Yeah, as he's I been found, he's gonna get caught up in the high ground. Then he gets wow, back with the Ax, he and he gets eviscerated. Now we're looking for Yapsor. Jam is down. They will TP out one. Jam is being uh, picked up, I think, by the courier and brought back. No, no, Pi has, has it. Has it. Okay. Pi, Pi picked it up instantly. He just dropped like a windlace or something. So they gave so. it to 3 3 on the uh, side hunter. Unless that was you're... 
pretty yeah. random, kind of unlucky actually. I, uh, Kaipi was moving over to try to see if Roche was there. I think Escape knew that it wasn't there, so then he maybe forgot that his opponents didn't know if Roche was up or not, which is why he felt comfortable doing that, perhaps, is maybe why he made that mistake. Does that make sense, Vaughn? Yeah, a little a bit. Point. Okay. Sorry. I was just thinking of something so, else. So, uh, Barretta getting blown up there is pretty huge. This, this just gives Kaipi another window slightly. Also, now when they use uh, Moonlight Shadow, their opponents aren't going to have the gem. That is so true. It's down for how long, by the way, for escape? Uh, it's up. They can buy one. As the Radiant Courier dies to Yapsor, unsurprisingly. So yeah, I mean, they, they have the ability to buy another uh, gem. As the Lasso is going to come through from Kazu Ravage. Will hit up, but only onto him. Here comes the ghost ship. Omni Slash will fly through. Lasso's done, and so is that Bat Rider. But now Era on the run. Swap back, and they bring him down. Very this tanky. The Chemical now. Rage, they have the X mark. That should be enough. The Torrent is going to come through. They need more damage, and they're doing it. He pops the armlet toggle, the magic missile, and that'll be it. He's down for anybody. He's got buyback. And he might have to use it soon. They've got another X mark, this time on Cinder, and he's going to go down. Buyback's only on the Alchemist. That's it. We'll see how far they go. Bambo X marks is himself. He's going to TP home, regen as much as possible with the cell. And... Turn off your armlet, man. There you go. <laughs> he lost, like, all of that because he left his armlet on the whole time. Was... And the salve is done, too. Yeah, he basically just turned off his armlet, went back to base, and salved without any fountain healing. He should be at 80%. It's not a big deal. They're, they win the fight very convincingly. I don't think Escape was necessarily ready to take that fight. Kezu did see an opportunity, but the Ravage, like we are talking about in the draft, it just makes it so difficult for Escape to fight until they get a BKB on a couple of heroes. And even the Omni Slash from Juggernaut didn't seem very effective. I think they were boat buffed the whole time. I so, so any damage done, it was very hard for them to pick off heroes in that fight. That boat buff is... It's it sometimes is really noticeable, but I think in that fight, uh, that's where, like, when no one goes down from Kai P after all those abilities are dropped, that's when you kind of know, like, okay. This ability has saved our lives one too many times. Um, Terrorblade probably going to go something like Butterfly next. All the carry heroes on Escape need to make MKBs, but they're already behind. It's a really dire situation for Escape now. He's going to go that Butterfly. The quarter staff purchase, as you mentioned, this is going to be uh, MKB central, but who can get it like you said? It's Arrow that's really probably the only one with any semblance of money at this point. Uh, yep. Him and... Well, the Riki, but he's not getting an MKB anytime soon. He sold the Mask of Madness. Well, not too surprised. <laughs> he had that for um, like all of a minute. <laughs> or well, yeah, maybe not did. a minute. It, but... it was a slight waste. This is about a, a thousand gold, but not a big deal considering his farm position in this game. He's doing great. And now he basically offsets a, an item that increases his attack speed and gives him movement speed. A better item that does the same thing and gives him evasion. So definitely worth it in this case. No life deal though. But, oh well. He's got Sandra. He's cool. Exactly. And the pipe mech as well, or the pipe guardian greaves on Tide Hunter making a big impact. 2 0 and 16 on Tide is playing amazing. This Tide Hunter is playing Ohio levels or whatever Tide you want to talk about. His ravages, I mean, yeah, they haven't been three or four man ravages, but he's ravaged the important heroes for the most part. Damage. Tower's gone. Jeeva's guard is up. It's a good way to clear loot since he's going to pop it and go to work. And now, well, 3-3 walks in. Ravage hits on just about everyone. Lip will go down. No buyback. Cinderin is next. He doesn't have buyback. And here we go. Rax will fall. And Escape might be going down to the loser's bracket, especially if Aerith falls here. He's going to have to Manta. X marks will bring him back. Can they focus him down? Air is getting low. Is it enough damage? The Radiance Burn misses are there, but it's just not enough. No buyback for anybody on the Dire side. Not for at least 100 gold for the Juggernaut. And they've taken two sets of racks. But what will they go for next? They try to get the last uh, bit of the melee arranged racks mid. Will they go for the tier 4? So they're going to back off. They have a huge advantage. I don't they think they want to waste it. Yeah, there's, there's not really that big of a deal for them to keep going. They have no Ravage, but that's it. And that's finish exactly the what there's a tier two. That's the only downside, actually. So they can think... go for tier fours here, but they just kill Moonwalls. I think that's the most important thing for now. It found Yapsor, by the way. He's done. Uh, should Is be he... done. Should be done. No. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> Bone Seven like literally waited for him to drop down, and then he said, "Hey, what's up?" Uh, one of those really good times where you can toggle on and off auto attack because if you have auto attack off, you have to do an A click. If it's on. 
then you'll just instantly start attacking Ricky as soon as you get the chance. Very good against like Puck. Mm -hmm. Never thought about that before. Yeah, that's uh, a good um, point. Demon Edge on TB probably gonna be. All right, he does. I was gonna say Daedalus, but MKB is the right choice just because of evasion on Alchemist and also prevents the Jug from going something like Butterfly to be able to resist damage as well. So it's not as high damage as the Daedalus is for all of all of his illusions, but it's gonna make killing Alchemist absolute child's play. Yeah, and that's what they need. He's the one that's surviving the longest in these fights, and it's not because of you know his HP, and maybe a little bit because of his armor, but it's mostly because of mischance and and the armor together. I think. Yep. So I think it'd be really difficult for for Kaipi to lose this game at this point. They just need to take another straightforward team fight. Don't make too many mistakes, and uh, should be the last rack. Nice smoke out here from Escape. Perfect timing. Maybe could have gone a couple seconds earlier, but here comes here the Here they round. go. They're going to wrap around. Hidden's Kezu's going to go in the from fire. the backside. They see the fire. There's the wave of tear. They're going to jump in. Ravage is not there for nine seconds. The Omni Slash, they've already lost Kezu, but the Omni Slash does nothing so far. Two dead Cinderin, and they're going to lose Era. Look at the chunk damage to Starstorm, and the next leap, the Ravage will catch him, and he's dead for 80 again. That is it. GG is called, and Kai P will take the series three to one. Great best of five. We don't get to that fifth game, but all around sound play coming out from Kai P. Burge. Yeah, they absolutely deserve to win this series. Um, they had even the one game they lost, they were doing extremely well, and they just.